with, with John here in Nairobi, Kenya, and this is our first time out here. John, it's good to meet you, brother. Well, let me ask you a question. So you say a lot of um, the people believe the white way of doing things, um, what you guys would say, Mzungu, right? Yeah. The Mzungu way of doing things is the best way. Now, how can they come to that uh, conclusion? Did they do any kind of like research to prove that their system is better than the Kenyans or black Kenyans? I mean, how did they come to that? Are they just coming up in their mind and they think it? Uh, you know, when Africans were colonized, mm -hmm. they were put on the lower bottom of the ladder. Correct. And uh, to come up, you had to, you know, do things in their own way. So most Africans were copying their own way. You know, like you have to study like the white person, and uh, you have to do this like the white person. And uh, we can say things like uh, the mentality that came, like Jesus is white, the devil is black, uh, white is clean, black is dirty. You know, the, the mentality that was input in people really, you know, what do I say? It really sunk in, you know, and uh, yeah, it's still running until now. It's sad, but it's the reality. So, you know, one big thing I do mention a lot on my channel, many of you guys know this, um, that false image of that white Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we understand, you know, coming from America, that that is the uh, symbol of white supremacy, is that they took the real Jesus of the Bible and replaced it with a image of their own. Now, in Kenya, do most people relate Jesus as to being black like you and looking like you? Like the real Jesus would look like, like you, or they relate Jesus to looking like a white man? Like everyone knows Jesus is white. Because the images that we see from the Bible, from the pictures, you know, Jesus has always been white with this, you know, kinky hair. I don't know what to call that hair. But uh, so for Africans, especially Kenyans, we know Jesus is white. And that is the mentality that the white people came with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is it any, do you believe that they can get rid of that mentality when, it's, when even scientific evidence has proven that Jesus was not a white man? Can they get rid of that mentality? Because but the reason why I'm saying that is because that puts a yoke of bondage in the mind where you continue to say, well, white is better. Because, see, they knew what they were doing when they said Jesus was white. Because if they say Jesus is white, well... We look like white, so it means we are superior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're inferior. You understand? Yes. So, so uh, the thing here is uh, the, uh, the, the religion has been pushed to Africa for a long time. Right. And uh, the bigger challenge would be religion does not relate with science. So there's no day you will tell a religious person uh, science has said this. Mm -hmm. Because religion is, is a mental, it's like a mental, you know, what do you call it? Mental disorder that uh, you have been put. And uh, fighting it and trying to change what has been put for years, you may, be, you may, seem, to like an, uh, you may seem to like an enemy. Uh, but yes, it can take time to change. With the, with the, uh, let's say with social media, with the people talking about it. It will not be science, but it will be people. Who will tell? Because before the white Jesus came, we used to have our gods, and uh, we still call them by, by the name. You know, we have Kikuyu who called their god Ngai. We have the Luo called uh, Kiluya who called their god Nyasai. The Kalinjin called their god Asis. And even as we pray right now, people mention God in those names. But Jesus came in as a as a vessel. Uh, let's, let's the same thing I will say about Muslim. The Muhammad came in as a as a prophet. So. But when the, when the religion was pushed to Africa, it was more of Jesus more than even God. And, uh, that is the mentality that most Africans have, is Jesus here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it will take time to change. I cannot say it cannot, it cannot, uh, it cannot be done, but it will take a lot of effort. Because uh, a lot of people believe, like in Kenya, 82% are Christian, uh, around 15% are Muslim. Mm -hmm. So you can, you, can, you can get the numbers. So let me ask you a question. In order to get rid of that colonial mind, basically what you're saying is you, you believe in God, I believe in God all day. Yeah. But I don't believe you have to go into organized religion to believe in God or practice worship of God. Do you believe if people walk away from the, the entity that, of that church, do you believe that will start turning some things around? Uh, pardon, if they walk from the entity of the church? Yes, yeah, like the, the religious set of going to the church. And I say you don't believe in God. 
You believe in God, you can do the work of God all day. But you don't go in the church setup with the white Jesus and all of that. Oh, pay the tithes to the pastor and the pastor going by a Rolls Royce and all that while your kids don't have anything. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Uh, what will kill that mentality is uh, if people are empowered in terms of stability of life. Because what, people, what pushes a lot of Africans to religion is poverty. You know, when you're poor and you're told if you worship white Jesus, if you give tithe, tomorrow you will get your money, tomorrow... And that people believe, you know. Someone will tell you, yes, I did that and I got money. So what will kill this narrative is if people are empowered to be stable, if countries are stable, you know. And uh, I can tell you the same thing in countries like Europe and America, where people are... Right, the level of life is another level. And, uh, yeah, people can see clearly. Yeah. So you believe countries like China, which is doing a lot of, you know, big-time investment and things in Africa, do you think they're motivated by religion or motivated by capitalism? In, in a country like China, is basically capitalism. There's no religion. Most of the people are atheists and Buddhist. So, yeah, so basically it's more of capitalism more than religion. So as the Chinese have been coming in to... Let's say Kenya, um, have they, you know, I've been hearing from some people that they've been coming to certain markets and they're kind of doing things on the cheap side and they're hurting the Kenyan people as in the local markets, etc. Has this been a continued problem? It, it was worse some time back uh, where Chinese went, went, started going until to the local markets selling simple things like second-hand clothes selling a simple thing like second, uh, mobile phones, you know, the lower end of mobile phone, the, uh, the fake mobile phones. And, uh, yeah, this is some, some time back, government launched a massive uh, deportation of the Chinese from the country. Said, so if you want to go there, those are, the, those are the jobs that can only be done by Kenyans. So the deportation really worked. But uh, still, it's still uh, an ongoing problem, still not solved, I can say that. Well, I saw, uh, I covered this story of a Chinese guy, I think maybe a year ago, they called a king and a monkey, and uh, he got deported. And do you guys experience that sometime with, with some, not all, Chinese as being racist toward Kenyans? Yeah, it happens. It happens, and uh, very few comes to the limelight. But mostly, you know, some, most workers will be afraid to come to the limelight because they lose their job. So it's something that happens in most, com in most Chinese front companies or white run companies. So, but uh, very few come to the limelight where we have advantage of people taking the mobile phones, or people capturing the, the incidents on phone. Yeah, but it happens. So, you know, I see, you know, you're a family man, mm -hmm. and, you know, you have children? Yes, I have one son. One son, awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you feel for, uh, great things for your son's future here in Kenya? Because see, in the United States, I saw my got thing about the back of my mind, and my child gets shot by a police officer. Well, I don't get shot by a police officer, but when it comes to your son, how do you feel about the future for your son here in Kenya? The future looks great in Kenya. We have a lot of, if you, if you go around the country, you'll see a lot of uh, infrastructure, infrastructure upgrade. You'll see a lot of uh, building coming up. You'll see a lot of business setting, up, uh, setting in. And uh, yeah, we also have government is really trying hard to you know, regulate things like corruption and stuff. So the future looks bright, and uh, I will never want my son to grow in a different continent. Africa is the future, I can say that. I can agree with that. Yeah. So, John, tell people, I know you got a YouTube channel, correct? Yeah. Tell people about your YouTube channel and how they can get to that. So, yeah, I started a YouTube channel almost a year ago. My main aim was to showcase the infrastructure project in the country, the roads, the town, the cities around Kenya. My plan is, my future plan is to show around the whole of Africa. Uh, it's called, my, my channel is called African Traveler. So of late I started doing some discussion, some, you know, to just uh, share with people. I used to be off camera, but uh, bit by bit I started coming on camera. Yeah. And I hope to share more and more. So please join my channel. It's African Traveler. 